to explain what actually happened. When Tinyman released, it released with a, an issue in their code. Uh, how an AMM works is that when you are creating a pool, it gives you a, a piece of code that runs every time uh, you create this pool. So, so you have a smart contract. It's called, so when you create a program on the blockchain itself, it's called a smart contract. It's just a, a piece of software on the blockchain. Um, so the smart contracts of Tinyman, um, they were released with an issue where um, if, you, if you run a very specific transaction, which by the way, is not possible with the front end. It, it's only possible uh, with a very specific script that you need to write yourself. Um, then you could uh, trick the pool into giving you um, uh, the same amount of a different token. Uh, so, for example, let's say you are, so the, the first pool that was attacked was the Go BTC pool. Um, and how it worked is that the pool was supposed to give uh, 38 algorands, but instead it was tricked into giving 38 of Go BTC. Wow. Yes. So um, the issue was that the asset IDs were swapped in, in, in that. So the uh, the amount was still the same, but the asset ID was was changed. Yes. So as you can see, the the value of the asset was very very important here because the, the 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 asset that you were getting had to be in higher value than the asset that you were giving uh, to the pool. Uh, and uh, in GoPTT's case, the ratio here is very very high because uh, the algorand price is like one point five dollars currently, um, and uh, and the Go BTC price is forty-seven thousand something like that. Probably lower. I, I don't follow the price of yeah. BTC. Um, and and yeah, as you can see, the, the difference in price is huge. So you are right. getting a, a massive amount of profit by switching the, these asset IDs. Yeah. yeah. Um, really and, quick, and nobody knew uh, this bug at the time. No, and I, I and think until it, they got hacked. Uh, yeah, until it got hacked, no one knew, and no one had the capability of knowing, knowing um, because it's it's very, very difficult to find these issues and even more difficult to exploit them in, in smart contracts. Uh, a smart contract has its code open, so you can read through it, especially in Tinyman's case, they are published on GitHub. Uh, you can read through the smart contracts, and if you really understand how it works, and if you really know your stuff with, uh, with decentralized um, architecture, you can you can find these issues, but I can guarantee it was not easy to find because um, uh, the the tiny man smart contracts were obviously audited in house and they, they were audited also by runtime verification, which is an awesome awesome company. Um, they have a ton of expertise in there, and I'm, I'm sure that the the bug was not easy to find and. Uh, uh, you you pay a lot a lot a lot of money to to get your your contract out of it. So uh, yeah. I'm sure everyone capable that could have looked at the code has looked at the code, and none of those people have found this this issue. Wow. So uh, I suspect the person that actually managed to find it has a lot of expertise himself uh, on Teal uh, Teal programming language. What Teal, Teal is the language that you write uh, smart contracts in on Algorand. Now, yeah. there's also reach, but it's a newer a newer version or, or a newer way of writing smart contracts. And um, and Teal was the original way which Tinyman has used. Um, so you really cannot blame anyone. I think um, obviously a uh, code is law. So uh, I would say um, what ha what has happened uh, to here uh, was. Allowed since you know code allows for it, but um, you cannot really blame anyone on the Tinyman team or the runtime verification either, because I'm sure that both teams are very very capable. Just you can see this just by the amount of code and uh, you know what they managed to do. I'm I'm sure that they checked the code as much as they could, uh, and still the, the issue was there. And there was uh, there was. Uh, um, a very fun phrase on Reddit that I read it was uh, the first one through the door gets shut. Uh, I think it's very very true in this case because uh, there is no no 
um, code to compare yourself to even uh, in this space. It's, the, the algorithm space is so, so early that there's not, not even any code snippets that you can look into and see if your code is even in close quality to, to theirs. They're basically the pioneers for this space, uh, which yes. is... Which, which granted them, you know, being the first, they, they got the most traffic, they were the only available ch solution. Um, but what I think happened also is that uh, TinyMan, before the major hack, also had one small issue with their pools, which is where um, if you had a very specific ratio of asset one to asset two, and it wasn't traded for some time, the pool would get locked and you couldn't interact it in any way. So it was, uh, it was the first issue that was found with Tinyman. And I think um, when this issue was released, uh, it prompted some expert out there in Teal to start looking into, into the code very, very, very closely uh, and trying to um, find even more bugs in it. And he managed to, to find one. Um, yeah. How to exploit this bug, it was also very specific because you had to write your own script and you had to uh, send a transaction with duplicate uh, asset IDs. So usually, what you, when you when you trade something on this on this pool, you send the amounts and you send the asset IDs that you are trading. And yes. you needed to create a custom transaction when where um, you would be sending two of the same asset IDs and then the second asset ID. So you would have like uh, one 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 and then two three four. That would be that would be the asset yeah. IDs that you would be sending, right? So uh, it's it's a very specific bug and it's it's very interesting that it happened. I'm a little bit surprised that the person decided to uh, not cooperate and uh, <laughs> instead of yeah, just uh, like just actually hack, right? Because he, yeah. I'm sure that he or she or even them, they have the options. Like, okay, we found this. Should we take this with them, or should we just uh, took really took advantage of this and yes, yes. Um, and so, as, as you could have seen uh, the person took uh, all the bitcoin that they, they they could get and sold it immediately on the market which uh, which if you even look at the tiny chart uh, um, chart you can see a massive spike and a massive massive uh, uh, fall of, of the of the bitcoin price and this is not an, a bug in our charting this is uh, exactly how how the price went so when you have very low liquidity, just like in this case, uh, the the price is very volatile, and the price can change very massively uh, with every single transaction. So the person, what basically what they did is take out all the liquidity from this pool and uh, and then proceed to try to sell all of it uh, on on the same on the same pool or on a different pool. I don't I don't remember, um, but. Wow. Um, it's it's very also interesting because they did it very hastily, I think, uh, and they stole thirty eight bitcoin, which is a uh, a massive amount, uh, but they sold it only for two hundred and fifty thousand. Um, so they lost a ton of money uh, on on it. I mean, they didn't lose because it was not theirs to begin with. Yeah, uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But but you can see that uh, it, they tried to do it very very fast, and so. What surprises me is that even though the person had the skills and obviously could have cooperated with Tiny Man, I'm, I'm sure they would have been rewarded in a fair way. Uh, instead, they decided to, you know, try to steal all the tokens and and somehow sell them uh, on the market. Uh, I, I'm I'm pretty sure these transactions to a centralized exchange because that person tried to take out the funds to a centralized exchange as well. Um, those transactions, I'm pretty sure, are marked. Uh, are flagged and the the person will have a very difficult time to take out this this the, these funds back to their bank account. So I don't think yeah. that these funds are are lost. It's just very interesting to me that um, they are a little bit short sighted. Even though uh, they could they are capable of of finding these issues, they were so short sighted and so blinded by the amount of money that they decided to try to steal it instead of you know getting rewarded from finding the bug, which would be um, I think the um, uh, I think the outcome would be pretty much the same because Tiny Man would immediately tell everyone to take out the liquidity out, but uh, a lot of people would still not lose their funds because um, you know 
the, the, the exploit wouldn't be published and um, they would have the info first. And uh, as it was, Tinyman had the info very, very uh, late because the hack took place on the 1st of, uh, of January, which is very inconvenient because everyone's on vacation. Um, uh, so no, they, played, they picked a good timing indeed. Yes, 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 yeah. yeah they yeah. did. And um, we were actually one of the first people to notice, notice it and take out our liquidity because we internally, uh, we, we took some calculations and uh, we tried to, to replicate or at least find the issue that was with the pool. And once we confirmed that our pool was also um, in risk, of closing the funds, we took out all our liquidity back, and uh, we tried to warn everyone on our Twitter, on our um, on Discord, everywhere that we had a chance to it, read it as well. Uh, one of one of the people also uh, sent a zero amount transaction to all the liquidity holders, so they can take out their liquidity as well, um, which was very nice of them. Basically, what you can do is. Um, is to send a zero transaction to someone and they don't get any funds from you, but they get a message uh, or a note to their wallet. So this also helped us to warn everyone of our liquidity holders to take out their funds. Wow. Um, and uh, thankfully, so, 19... also short, that was uh, the BTC pool was the only one that got hacked, or there are other pools as oh, well? I think a lot of pools got hacked. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Go ETH pool was the biggest one for sure, and by far. Uh, yeah. But the Go ETH pool was also hacked. I mean, hacked. It was exploited. Yeah, um, exploited. Um, and, uh, and by the same group of people, or we don't know. Uh, Probably. I, th I think Go ETH and Go BTC was the same group of people, but unfortunately, uh, shortly after, um, shortly after. Uh, we found the exploit and we started warning people. One of the one of the companies uh, created a very detailed report uh, for for this exploit, and this report unfortunately also included uh, code to to yeah the, that you could run that would do this exploit, and it even had a list of available pools that you could do it to. So as you can imagine, um, wow. the list the, the amount of attacks spiked a lot uh, in the following days. And thankfully, by this time, we have put out, uh, or we have taken out 96% of our liquidity out. Um, so we haven't lost much. I think we have lost 14,000 uh, tiny tokens, um, which is still a lot uh, uh, for a single person. But in, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't a lot. Uh, but uh, I know that the Akita pool was hit uh, very hard. Uh, by by the hack because it was I'm, I'm pretty sure it was on the top of the list of uh, of uh, exploitable pools and everyone that just could or everyone that wanted to could just go to this report for uh, pretty much a step up by step guide how to exploit this pool and, and steal the funds. That's so, crazy. So uh, it was not the best decision in my mind, um, uh, and uh, I think. Also, this has prompted Tiny Man to to stop the the refund the refunds after some point. They I'm pretty sure they they only do refunds for the first three days, something like that. Um, because after that, anyone could just take this piece of code and run it on any pool. And you know, if if you haven't taken liquidity uh, out by then, you you are just pretty much asking for your funds to be to be lost. That's absolutely crazy. So what? Do you see that moving forward, the impact has on Tiny Man and Tiny Chart, even the whole ecosystem? Um, or is there lessons for us? I think um, the biggest impact will be a much higher scrutiny <laughs> in all the audits and all the code checks and everything. Uh, fortunately, I think future smart contracts will be using Reach and not Teal. There's a huge difference. Um, in these languages, because Reach does all these checks already for you. Which, um, by the way, and, and my co-founder is a huge fan of the language. Um, so all of our smart contracts will be written in Reach as well. Uh, and Teal is a very difficult language, pretty much, because it it, um, it communicates with the blockchain pretty much directly. So you're writing on a very, very low level, and it's very difficult for any human to understand what's happening in this code. 
Um, so we we are still very very early in the algorand uh, development space, and um, the fact that Tiny Man has even achieved um, creating these these this AMM with just Teal is is very very impressive. So I think. Um, and their response to the hack was also very, very good. I think they were prepared for something like that. Uh, I don't think they were expecting it to happen, but I do think they had a plan on, in action what to do to prevent further damage and how to um, give back the funds to all the people that have lost funds in this hack, stuff like that. So so big props to them. I think they handled the, the situation very, very well. Um, and for future of Tiny Man, I think uh, it's just... Um, Minor a minor bump in the road. I think um, they will get back. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure the contracts are already finished, and they are just um, waiting for the auditors and everyone. Pretty much, they can get uh, to 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 read their code and and check it if if, if it doesn't have any more issues in it. Um, so I do think Tiny Man will come back. I think it will come back a lot stronger. And even though people a little bit uh, will have lost a little bit of trust. At the very beginning, I think it will be very, very quickly rebuilt for them. I think, especially on Algorand, uh, DeFi has a chance to be uh, the traditional forms of buying and selling cryptocurrency because exchanges have a lot of overhead. They have to, you have to give all of your data. Uh, you have to have, you have to create an account. Um, your wallet is not really your wallet because it belongs to the exchange. One of my, I think, um, opinions that people might not agree on is that. DeFi has a huge, huge, huge chance to actually beat this system. And especially on Algorand, where you don't have to wait for transactions, um, it's it's as instant as buying or selling it on, on, an, on a centralized exchange. And the result is much better because uh, what you're getting from, from, from the DeFi is instantly in your wallet and nobody else has access to it.